In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to take a photograph of a paper pattern you might have, a paro pattern, and digitize it using Pattern Master Boutique version 5. And I'm going to use the Pattern Editor section portion of the program. Now, Pattern Master is actually a very robust program to generate automated patterns based on a unique set of measurements, which could be you or your clients. You can see instantly as I change the different options of the different sleeve types, it gives me a little schematic drawing here of what my design is going to look like. There's quite a few options for patterns that you want to draft with the style editor portion of the program. But what I'm going to do for this portion of the program is use the pattern editor. And using the pattern editor, I'm going to bring in a photograph of one of my paper patterns that I carefully photographed straight on so there would be no distortion. And I'm going to trace over it using the different tools that are available in pattern editor. I'm starting with a blank drawing and I'm going to use File Merge. The reason why I'm not going to open my drawing is because in the past, and it might be my computer that caused the problem, not particularly the Pattern Master software, but when I used Open, sometimes my photographs became corrupted and I wasn't able to use them in other software. So just to play it safe, I used Merge and I haven't had a problem. And I'm looking for the pattern shot that I want to use and we're going to use the shorts front photograph that I have for this demonstration and I click open. Now the previous versions of Pattern Master did allow me to bring in a photograph uh, but not as clear as this and the other thing that I enjoy is now when I grab the photograph and move it around I can still see it versus previous versions, it would completely red it out. I wouldn't even be able to see the, the photograph behind it, and that became a little awkward at times. So now I just, I really love the clarity that Pattern Editor version 5 has in the, the Boutique 5.0 version. Now, this was a rub off of an actual pair of shorts that I was happy with the fit on. Uh, and I did the rub off of the existing shorts with no seam allowance so that I can add all of that. These two lines here represent some pleats. This line here represents a pocket. And these crisscross lines here, this is my control square is what I call it. It's a two inch by two inch square so that I can measure that out and scale my photograph to make sure that everything is going to be true to size by the time I output my final pattern. And if I want to be even more precise, I might give myself footnotes on my pattern. For example, if this line here was 14 inches, I might write 14 here. If this line right here was 6 inches, I might write 6. So that you can be as accurate to the sixteenth of an inch as you need to be. But in this case, the overall fit, uh, there was some room for error. You have a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch here and there because the pants were, these shorts were a little loose. So once I do my two inch by two inch square sizing trick here, uh, I'm just going to go with uh, the manual digitizing. I'm not going to worry about uh, the down to the sixteenth of an inch measurement on this one. Plus, I want to quickly show you the demonstration and not make it too exhaustive. Not on this round, anyway. Now, I've programmed my screen cam function to show you visually the difference between a left click and a right click on the mouse. The left click is going to be with some red echo rings. The right click is going to be with some blue echo rings. So you will not see this on the Pattern Master program. This is for my screen cam demonstration to you. And the reason why it is important that you know if I'm left clicking or right clicking, because in Pattern Master, Pattern Editor, the left click is for a particular function to place your starting or end point anywhere that you desire. 
and right click is the snap function. The snap function will grab to the nearest control point or construction point. So I'm going to start with the points. And most of the time, since this is not a tutorial on how to fully operate Pattern Master, it's more a tutorial about digitizing a photograph of a paper pattern, uh, I'm not going to exhaustively teach you all of the bells and whistles of the, the program, more so the technique. If you would like to learn more about the bells and whistles of the program, I will have future tutorials, but you can also go to wildginger.com website and you can download a fully functioning demo version of the software program. Now print and save will be disabled, but everything else you can use and, and fully experience and, and learn the program. You can also follow along with what commands I'm using. This upper left hand side will uh, be kind of a status bar of what I'm doing. So right now I'm going to use the point function and we're going to click spacebar to repeat the last command. Click, click, and click. So I've created four handles here and now when I use the line function I can snap, snap very quickly and easily around my two inch by two inch square. Now it's time to see what my 2 inch by 2 inch square represents fresh into the pattern editor. And if I take a look here, it's 27.36 inches. Uh, and I only want it to be 2 inches. Sometimes your photographs, this is a very high resolution photograph, uh, so it's very large. Sometimes when you bring your photographs in, they're actually going to be smaller and you need to size up or scale up the whole thing. But in my case, I'm going to have to scale down, actually. So 27.6, 27.5, 27.4. The fact that these are all 27 inches, point, such a minute amount, means I did a pretty good job of doing a straight-on photograph. If you m measure your 2 inch by 2 inch, your control square here, and you're coming up with a very big difference between your horizontal and vertical, you may want to take that photograph over again because there could have been some distortion there. Um, so now we're going to do some math. I'm going to bring in my calculator here. And my square is supposed to be 2 inches, uh, but I'm going to bring it up to the hundredth percentile, which is 200. And I'm going to divide that by what it is now, which is 27.5. Four, four. And that's, that means my square is only 7.288% of what it should be. Meaning 2 inches is 7.28% of 27. So I'm going to have to scale down and to find out by exactly what percentage, I would just minus this 7.288 by 100, so subtract 100 from it, and I need to scale down 92.71%. 92.71%. So I'm going to zoom all, or look at the whole thing here. You can also do ZA. Now I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to use the scale feature and I need to shrink it, and I need to shrink it proportionally because I found out my, my lines are pretty straight on. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to type in that 92.71 and click Apply. And it shrinked that right down, and let's see how well my 2 inch by 2 inch square is doing. 1.995, 2.01, 2.007. That's close enough to 2 inches for me to, to get a nice, accurate, true-to-life scale for my digitizing. Now, continuing to use construction points, lines, and arcs, you'll see how quickly and easily I'm able to digitize around this paper pattern that is now true-to-life size. Using my zoom window, PO for point, 
and I can zoom previous and I can keep zooming around and placing these construction points. Oh, here's another one here. And that's the bottom of my leg there. And PO again. And now, since I have these construction points, oops, I don't have my little pleat markers here. I'm still so amazed at the clarity and smoothness that version 5. I just received version 5 a couple of days ago for Christmas, so it's newly unwrapped, so I'm pretty excited about all the new improvements over version 4. All right, my line command, snap, snap, spacebar, snap, 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 snap. See how easy this is? Now, this is a curve or an arc. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see the shaping of that. I'm going to use the arc command here, which is AR on the keyboard. Snap, snap. And see, now I can rubber band here and nestle that into the shape I want. Sometimes you're going to have to break an arc to fit neatly into an area, which I think I'm going to have to do in the upper waistband area. So let's go ahead and do that. AR, snap, snap. Now it doesn't all nestle nicely in there, so I'm going to, this guy fits fine, this little pocket area, so I'm going to snap here. Now I'm going to break the arc from here to here and nestle it in here as well. So the break command, click on the line I want to break, and I broke it to there. So now it's actually two different arcs with control points. So now I'm going to move this down and nestle that right there. I'm a little off right here. And what I can do is move this whole point. And that's good enough. And I'm going to give myself some Oops, wrong line there, wrong control point. Some little reminder lines here. They don't have to be perfect. Just to remind myself that I'm going to need the, to slash and spread or slash and pivot these two here so that I can create my pleats. Now the crotch area. I'm going to start with a line. Now from about here to here, I need to create an arc. Snap, and let's try it to about here. And that was a click because I determined where it should go. Now I need to reset this line here. I'm going to break it right there and get rid of this little tail end. And let's zoom in. So those are almost touching each other. Let me turn on the construction points, which is CP. See the little construction points there? I'm going to MP, move point, and snap, snap. Now they're lined up perfectly. So now I'm going to click on these lines just so you can see their size and scale. This here is 5.549. This is 9.971. Now, let's say for argument that I had a footnote that this is supposed to be a 10 inch line. Now, it's only off such a minute amount, not even a 16th of an inch. But let's say I'm a perfectionist and I want it to be exactly 10 inches uh, to match the footnote that I may have put on my paper pattern. I would simply go locate point because I have this already selected, snap from the line, end of the line I want to measure from and I want to see where 10 inches is, and I click Apply. Now another little construction point happened down there, and I zoom in. See the little construction point there? 
it shows me where exactly 10 inches is from this line here. And just to show you again the accuracy of the digitizing in the pattern editor here, I'm going to measure this just so you can see how minute. That is 0 0.029 of a difference. 0 0.029 of a difference. Not even not even a fraction of a pencil width, but being the perfectionist that I am, just for this one little demonstration, I'm going to move this point to this point so that we have exactly 10 inches. So that's my MP command. Snap, snap, and zooming out here. Now this is exactly 10 inches. Nobody can argue with that. So now that I've digitized all the points, I already used my 2 inch by 2 inch square. I really don't need the photograph anymore. So I'm going to delete that. And remember, I did this as a merge instead of the actual photograph. So my original photograph file is still intact and untouched. And I don't need my square anymore. Now I have the perfectly digitized front shorts. I don't have the seam allowance attached. Um, and I can show you that here in just a moment. So now I'm going to add seam allowance just so that you can quickly see the completed pattern piece. I like to keep my original block or sloper intact, so I'm going to make a copy of it now and continue manipulating it. In fact, I often enjoy keeping a trail by copying steps as I go along so that if I ever need to go back a few steps, I have that option. For the sake of this particular demonstration, let's say we're not going to use pockets or pleats on this one. That could be another lesson in itself on how to do the slash pivot and slash spread and building the pocket bag. Now this line is not as perfectly horizontal as I like when I'm working with my patterns. So I'm going to draw a target line that's perfectly horizontal. I'm going to highlight my pattern and I'm going to use the align feature aligning these two points to these two points. Now I can get rid of that reference horizontal line and now you can see that my line is perfectly horizontal. So next we're going to do seam allowance by using the offset feature. My seam allowance is going to be a half inch and I'm going to click apply and using the space bar to repeat the command, I'm going to click and drag the direction that I want to offset. Now my hem is going to be a one inch offset, so I'm going to change this here to one and offset my hem. And we're done with that there. Now you see these did not connect, that's where intersect comes in. I end this line to this line and we just continue that all the way around. Now let's draw in our drain line, and we'll assume this is a two-way fabric, meaning I can flip the, the shorts piece around, and I'm going to label it now. Let's use capitals. And let's do 3 eighths of an inch this, or 0.3 is fine. So I have it labeled, put that down here. And I need a notch for the front crotch, so I'm going to zoom in. And now we have our perfectly digitized front pattern block. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. It was not recorded in a sound studio like I would have hoped, but if I wait until that happens, I'll never be able to get around to bringing you these demonstrations. It was actually recorded from my downtown fashion district loft in Los Angeles, so you're going to hear a lot of background noise, and I apologize for that, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.